For years, scientists have made new discoveries again and again, and when they find something of significance, they often name whatever it is after themselves, or name it after something they like, among other things. Scientists have named terms after mythologies, books, movies, and just recently, video games. In this video, I'll be going over every scientific term that was named after a video game, or at least every one that I could find. So if I'm missing one or more, let me know in the comments. Without further ado, let's get into it. So, there's this gene called SHH, and it has a protein called the sonic hedgehog protein that helps cells secrete signals to each other in regards to how certain parts of the body form, including the central nervous system, small bones in the fingers and toes, teeth, lungs, and also seems to play a role in how hair regrows. So, why is this gene named what it is? Well, you see, the HH gene is called the hedgehog gene due to the way the gene covers an embryo and denticles when its production is stopped. The denticles in question look like spikes found on a hedgehog. Originally, the gene was called the common European hedgehog, but Bob Riddle, the man who first cloned the gene, asked Dr. Cliff Tavin, who ran the lab in which they did research, if the name could be switched to Sonic Hedgehog, because he saw the blue blur in a comic book owned by his daughter and thought the character was cool, so having a gene named after a rat hedgehog was better than the original boring name. Funny enough, around the time the gene's name was changed, McDonald's had a promotional Happy Meal tie with Sonic, so someone who knew Tabin, who didn't know who Sonic was, called him and expressed excitement that their new gene was so cool that it was being made into Happy Meal toys. This happened in 1994, so the Happy Meal tie was for the promotion of Sonic 3. Speaking of Sonic 3, there is another hedgehog gene that was known as Echidna Hedgehog, which sounds like it was named after Knuckles, but in reality, it was named after the spiny anteater. Would have been a lot cooler if Knuckles got his own scientific term. The Sonic gene wasn't without controversy though. This gene, if activated incorrectly, seems to cause complications like certain types of cancers and other bodily defects. As mentioned before, this gene regulates how certain parts of the body grow, so if Sonic Hedgehog gets out of control, it can create too much of something or too little of something, which leads to these conditions to develop and for certain parts to deform. As such, some scientists do not believe that a gene that can cause such damage should have a non-serious name. Imagine being a doctor and having to explain to a parent that their child has cancer because of Sonic Hedgehog. Yeah, that would be awkward as hell. So as such, most scientists just refer to this gene as SHH if they don't want to sound silly or are in a serious environment. This gene can be inhibited though. A molecule known as Robotnikinin, obviously named after the blue blur's arch nemesis, can block the signals given off by Sonic Hedgehog. I can imagine being a doctor and explaining this to one of my patients. Yes sir, your cancer was caused by Sonic Hedgehog, but we were able to stop its spread by using Robotnikinin. Sonic Hedgehog isn't the only gene that received this controversy though. Mothers Against Deca Pentaplegic and Lunatic Fringe were also criticized for having such humorous names. I hope you like biology, because we're going to be talking about it for all of these terms, so strap in for some discourse on mitosis. Okay, here's a recap on the processes of mitosis. So, a cell copies its DNA and gets ready to divide. In prophase, the chromatin from interphase condenses, so it can turn into chromosomes joined by sister chromatids, and the two centrosomes from interface spread out in order to become spindle microtubules. Each of these sister chromatids has a connective chore, and this structure allows the chromosomes to line up in the middle of the cell in metaphase. The chromosomes are then separated by the enzyme separase and move to the opposite sides of the cell in order to create a new cell, which is telophase followed by cytokinesis. The depolymerization, or breakdown of polymers, polymers being any substance made of macromolecules, of the microtubules is also important to how these chromosomes are pulled to their poles, and one of the ways this can happen is that the connective cords guide the chromosome to the microtubule, and as it's doing this, it seems to chew away the microtubules. This is referred to as the Pac-Man mechanism, due to the way the microtubule is eaten away in the same fashion that the yellow character eats pellets, and sometimes his ghostly enemies. It seems this term was first used in the paper, Dynamic Instability of Microtubules, first published in 1987. I couldn't find any other scientific articles that used the Pac-Man term, so I'm pretty sure this was the first. Big thanks to Arthur Foyer for helping me find this. This mechanism did cause some debate in the scientific community, as other papers have pointed out some inconsistencies with the Pac-Man model when it came to the microtubules depolymerization. However, research seems to indicate organisms have multiple ways to perform this function, so the Pac-Man model is still valid, but isn't used in every organism or in every use of mitosis. In order to survive, the body and brain need to do certain functions in a very short amount of time, as in, the task needs to be done in milliseconds, or even less than that. 
Our brains need to be able to take in information as fast as it can, so it can be analyzed, then we can make a decision based on the stimulus. Pikachurin, named after the lovable electric mouse in the Pokemon games, is a protein that helps our eyes in seeing fast moving things. Now I tried reading how this protein works with our eyes and brains, and I'm not gonna lie, I understand only a fraction of these sentences, so I apologize, but I had to keep this section short and simple. But before we move on, Pikachurin is also recognized by Guinness World Records as the first protein named after a video game character, despite the fact Sonic Hedgehog was discovered and named in 1994, while Pikachurin was given its name in 2008. Continuing with the pocket monsters, we have a gene called 7BTB7, aka Pokemon. Pokemon regulates cell growth, and it gets its name from the fact it fully stands for POK, Erythroid, Myeloid, Ontogenic Factor. POK is the gene family Pokemon is from, Erythroids and Myeloids are types of red blood cells, and Ontogenic refers to how this gene is connected to cell growth. Just like Sonic Hedgehog, this gene is also known to be connected to cancer, as it's been observed to convert regular cells into tumor cells. Because of this, Pokemon is sometimes used as a biomarker to determine if someone potentially has cancer. If I had a Pokeball for every time a scientific turn named after a video game had ties to cancer, I'd have two Pokeballs. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. And just like Sonic Hedgehog, Pokemon was also controversial due to its name, but this time, it was a lot worse. The Pokemon company actually threatened the researchers at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center with legal action if they did not change the name as they didn't want their brand connected to a dangerous gene. As such, this gene is now referred to as 7BTB7, which is a boring name. Okay, let's cut back on all that scientific jargon and just look at some organisms named after video games. I'm not going to list every organism named after a video game, but rather, I'll just bring up some that I thought stood out. Galakadon Norcaste is a carpet shark that was named as such due to their teeth looking like the spaceships from Galaka. And speaking of the arcade cabinet, there's also a harvest spider, aka Daddy Longlegs, named Taito Galica, due to the white spot in their body resembling one of the insect toys from the game. Although these creatures aren't the only harvest spiders to be named after a Taito classic, as there's another species called Taito Space Invaders. There's a bivalve called Rotinia Cardia Mario Broserum, based off the ever so famous Italian brothers, a spider named Epicrantinus Zelda from the often damsel in distress, a gastropod named Cortana after the blue AI from Halo, and now extinct species of bandicoots literally called Crash Bandicoot. And getting back to Pokemon, there's a pterosaurus named Aerodactyl, a couple of different spiders named after the Trico evolution line, and even more spiders named after Pikachu and Dreepy, along with three different beetles named after the three legendary birds, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. Okay, that's about every scientific term I could think of that was named after a video game. Thanks so much for watching, and have a good day.